Welcome to Creating Happiness. You are in the right place to create confidence, happiness and freedom. I'm Steph and this is Sheila. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our second episode in the series How to Create a Happy Christmas. We're very excited today and we just can't wait to get into it. But before we start, I just wanted to say... We are releasing a free meditation, a Christmas meditation that you will get access for free and we will tell you how to get access at the end of the episode. So today's episode title is How to Deal with Difficult People at Christmas. I think this is pretty juicy because honestly, I don't know many people who don't have a difficult per person that shows up at Christmas Day. Oh, Christmas sure. Day. That's right. I mean, everyone's got an Uncle Fred or... A brother or a difficult cousin or, or somebody that's that's difficult within their family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because we all have so much going on at Christmas time, don't we? Mm. Um, you know, but, but the pressure to entertain or visit someone who's difficult, we just don't need that on top yeah. of all the other stress that's going no, on. No, exactly, because we're dreading it yeah. the entire time before because we know, okay. That's what I'm going to have to deal with. And there is no way out type of thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whether, I mean, let's think about it. It could be your mother-in-law mm -hmm. telling you that you don't know how to roast the potatoes. <laughs> and you've done it for like 10 years. Mm. Um, or it could be your uncle who always gets drunk and is a bit out of order. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you, you know, or a brother your, mm -hmm. or a sibling that's, that's rude. Yeah. Um, it, does that sound familiar? I mean, I bet there's every family has got one of these, mm -hmm. at least one. Yes. And it's hard because obviously you have to go to your Christmas meal and or at least you think you have to. And there is there's this feeling of being trapped and cornered, isn't there? Mm, absolutely. So but before we get the, into this a lot more, let's ask a basic question, which is what do we mean by difficult? What we mean by difficult is that one person who is almost determined mm. to ruin everything that, that you want to make nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said earlier, it could be your mother-in-law telling you that you're not quite right with the roast potatoes or some aunt mentioning your weight again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, God, yes. You know, oh, you're a bit too... You know, you're getting a bit too podgy there or you've put on mm. a few pounds or some sarcastic comment that really winds us up. I think one of the comments I've I've heard the most about is, especially amongst people who are younger, is the classic asking about your work top uh, kind of questions where they're like, oh, so how is it going knowing that you're still out of work? You know, <laughs> oh, that's cruel, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. So, like I said, there's so many other pressures going on at Christmas. Mm. We just really don't need that. So we've come up with a few strategies to help you deal with those difficult people. Awesome. Um, that, that we feel that might help you. I mean, when we're thinking about Christmas time, we are inherently thinking about how to ensure that everything works out. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that things are prepared correctly and mm -hmm. in the way that we want it to be. So it's kind of funny how in these situations, sometimes stuff happens and it blows everything up <laughs> kind of yeah. thing, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. I mean, for example, what, what, many years ago when my children were small, I had mm -hmm. two small children and I traveled over 200 miles just before Christmas, to spend Christmas with my parents. Mm -hmm. And for some unknown reason, my mum decides to walk the dog. Okay. Mid-morning on Christmas Day. Right. So I would kind of said to her, so is there anything you want me to do for mm -hmm. dinner, for lunch? She said, oh, no, we don't have lunch. And you just travelled 200 miles yeah, with yeah, two yeah. small children. And I said, well, what do you mean? It's Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, no, no we, we have dinner in the evening. So I said, oh, wow. Okay. So we, we ended up with a cheese sandwich for our Christmas lunch. God. And then <laughs> it didn't end there. Okay. Then she um, started preparing dinner, but it was, wasn't served until 
half eight in the evening when wow. the children were already in bed asleep. Mm-hmm. So they had no Christmas, They had really. no Christmas. <sighs> no. Oh, Needless to say, I didn't repeat that. I mm-hmm. never went again. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you didn't. Yeah. Bless her. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. But that kind of begs the question, how can we deal with difficult people? Well, had I known what I know now mm. back then, I wouldn't have, you know, I would have had some different strategies going on. Yeah. But one of the things, the first thing to do is to actually focus on yourself before the event, before you arrive or before your guests arrive mm. so that you can feel relaxed. Yeah. So take a walk, have a meditation, have a nice hot bath, whatever you like to do to relax yourself Um, do your yoga uh, and just make sure you're in a good space. I think that's a very, very good piece of advice for any situation where you're feeling stressed out. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, we work ourselves up to be on a string nearly yeah. during these times. So if you can find a way to relax and to put yourself in a good headspace, yes. that's already a winner. Well, that's right, because it already will help you to be calmer. Mm. And m- much more tolerant of everybody else's behavior. Mm-hmm. So you're not already wound up before yes. they come. Yes. So, well, I mean, another thing that I think, I mean, do you think that we have too many expectations at Christmas? Uh, most certainly. We spend probably a few weeks, if not more, thinking about all the things that we want to, to achieve and we want to see happen. Uh, you know, we want to make sure our food is perfect. We want to make sure we have, I don't know, five types of dessert. And uh, we just we just get so stuck in all these ideas that we want to get into. And we forget about what we actually want to achieve for ourselves, mm. right? So by having high expectations, of course, we're kind of setting ourselves up for disappointment. Oh, yes, we? absolutely. And... um So really here, it's a good tip to be realistic. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know it's not something that we generally say that to accept, but this is Christmas. Well, I think there is an element of you're factoring in other people and you can't have expectations of others, really. You can mm-hmm. only expect things of yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I find in my life when there is someone else involved, I kind of, you know, there is an expectation of certain, we, we will have an episode on this anyway. Yes. As we've said, expectations like a thousand times. <laughs> But, you know, you can't expect your 92-year-old granny who is a uh, someone who's got some ideas about life to change for you on that day. It's mm. not going to happen. No. So, so that's why I say if if we can be realistic, then we're not setting ourselves up for a huge disappointment. Mm. And, um, r- and rather than expecting everything to be absolutely perfect. Yes, and what's perfection anyway? We've got an episode on perfection and it escapes me right now which one it is. But I'll write it in the episode notes if you are interested to check it out. Yes, that's a good idea. So we've talked about all the things that we want to make sure we do before Christmas to, you know, think about setting yourself up to su- for success. Mm-hmm. But is it worth mentioning gratitude at this point? Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm. It's always worth mentioning gratitude, isn't it? Because as we all know, gratitude is a wonderful thing to feel. Mm. So if you can find ways of um, dreading, you know, instead of dreading the encounter, if you can find ways of remembering the nice qualities about that difficult person... Mm. <laughs> I mean, we're both grinning here thinking, yep. yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean it honestly. Mm. Um, think about, but but also think about other things to be grateful for. Think about the fact that you've got a family at all mm-hmm. um, and whether they're coming and it's a dread. But, but hey, you've got a family. Yeah. And think about all the hot food that you're going to be eating or, or the, the alcohol you're going to be consuming. <laughs> or Don't or drink the, too much, please. <laughs> or the fact that you've got a roof over your head. Yes. These are things to be grateful because mm-hmm. there are many people that don't have those yeah. things. So I think gratitude is always, always valuable mm. to just kind of put yourself on a level, level playing field. Yes, and, and also I think it allows you to really take your mind off the topic, doesn't it? Well, I think it helps you to re-evaluate those expectations, mm-hmm. really. Yeah, I agree. So, but what can we do when our family puts so much pressure on us? 
I think this is a very good question and I love the answer to this, which is making sure that we keep our boundaries. You know, don't let yourself be bullied into eating more than you would usually or having more dessert or more wine or whatever. Mm. Do you know, I still remember to this day, I was probably maybe 12 or 13 and my friends at that time started smoking. And one of them said to me, oh, please try it. Let's, they tried to make uh, an, you know, a situation out of it. And I would just say, sorry, but I'm not interested. Until this friend of mine said, friend, in inverted commas, said, oh, do it for me. <laughs> this was the, it, it was a terrible mistake that she said that. And I still remember, I was a small child at the time. And I went like, pardon? And I gave her a whole lecture on why I will never smoke for anyone. <laughs> anyway, but you know, this, it's, I think at Christmas, it's a perfect time where anyone would try to make you do something for them for no reason, but to just make sure that they have kind of the upper hand on you. Yeah. And I think it's really, really, really important to maintain your boundaries. I mean, Always. if your family expect you to come and stay for two weeks, but you would rather just stay for two days, mm. consider the fact that two days may be just good for you. Yeah. And don't give in, you know, don't, you don't have to go for two weeks. And, you know, at the end of the day, the reason why we do things for that, for others is because we want to please them because we mm. want to be liked. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought about it the other day. I was like, you know what? I don't actually care at all what anyone thinks <laughs> of me. So, you know, I might like to eat sugar and my friend thinks it's bad. <sighs> Good for you, <laughs> you know. Mm. Mm. So, but that does take a certain courage, I it have does. to say. And maybe we'll do an episode about that as well. Yes, I think that'd um, be useful. About how, how much do we care? Mm. So, yeah, go on. I think you've got something. Yeah, I was going to say, what about arguments? Because I think that's something that we are all afraid of. Mm. You know, we know that, for example, Uncle Tom is a conservative and we are the opposite of that because I don't know anything about politics, so excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, Uncle Tom is going to make that comment that really rubs you off the wrong shoulder. So what do we do then? Mm -hmm. Well, I think my best advice would be to not get drawn in mm -hmm. to any disagreements over Christmas. So this, this is Christmas. Well, yeah. Um, so if you know in advance mm. what's going to trigger you, then um, perhaps you can rehearse your response in advance. And even to say, do you know what? I Let's agree to disagree. Mm. Don't get drawn in. Yes, that's because it's so easy and so tempting, isn't it? Yes. I think also because those difficult people, they know what your soft spot, well, your tender spots are. Yes. And they're going to absolutely bring yeah. up that topic that you really don't want to discuss. Yeah. And if you enter into any kind of discussion with that person, what what are you doing really? Are you, are you just trying to prove yourself right? Mm. And what's the point of that? Exactly. We have a do have a podcast about that. Give mm -hmm. up about being right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... So when is it okay to walk away? I mean, well, is it ever okay to walk away? Yes, you should. I, I mean, do you know, I'll tell you a small story. I was looking for a house a few months ago now, probably half a year ago. And uh, I walked into, it took me, well, let's say I walked into this house that they were renting for an obscene amount of money. And I saw, as soon as I entered, I saw that, that the plaster was coming off the walls. And I said to, the, to this uh, agent, sorry, but I don't think there is any point in me seeing this house. It's really not going to work for me. And I left. Her face, she couldn't believe it because I didn't waste my time going around the house to look at it and to just say then within myself, oh, I already know it's not working for me. So I just walked away, mm -hmm. which... Perhaps it's unconventional, but, you know, just to prove my point, if there is someone that is pushing you too, too much, it's okay to walk away. You own it to yourself mm. to not let anyone really push your boundaries, you know, further than you allow mm. them to be pushed. Mm -hmm. And how we walk away is, is, is up to you. But I mean, my yeah. suggestion would be to smile and politely just remove yourself from yes. the situation Absolutely. and regroup yourself 
get your headspace back into calmness if you have to go back mm. and then go back calmly and yeah. before anything is said just say let's agree to disagree yes with a big smile <laughs> yeah i like that so this is another good question because like we mentioned before we often feel as though we are cornered in these situations mm. but how do we avoid being cornered mm, that's a horrible feeling isn't mm, it when absolutely sometimes somebody a family member can literally corner you mm -hmm. literally put their hands either side of you on the wall yeah 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 how yeah, yeah, yeah. terrible is that um so i think it's probably easier if you're hosting mm -hmm. um Have have a few games at hand. Have plan A and plan B and plan C if necessary. Keep people busy yeah. so that you you avoid being um, vulnerable to, to that difficult person. Mm. Um, and, you know, also keep remember that difficult people often really want to talk about themselves. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. So ask them about themselves. Mm. Ask them about their job, their hopes, their dreams, their fears, whatever. Perhaps not their fears. No. But, you know, <laughs> keep it light. Um, and then they'll love to talk about themselves. And so it may deflect the, the, the situation attention. away from you. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But what if that doesn't work? Well, it would be really clever to think of an ally in advance. Think about your sister or whoever is coming to this Christmas party. Think about someone who would side with you and stick with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just make sure you are not left alone, let's say, or you don't feel alone in that mm -hmm. situation. And it's interesting because um, backing up, backing somebody up is actually a lovely thing to do. Yes. So that's all you're asking is for someone to back you up if there's a if the situation becomes difficult mm. and that you can perhaps give some eye contact to and they step in and yes and just be with you you'll have more courage if someone if you know that someone is standing next to you on on your side mm. so yeah yeah that's very good so we've kind of given a lot of information out throughout the episode so we won't have a specifically a tip part, uh, part of our episode we rather we will just uh, we are going to recap what we've already said So let's start with the first point, Sheila. Yeah, so before the visit even happens, whether you're visiting or you've got guests coming, focus on yourself. Mm. Um, go for a walk, meditate, get calm, get yourself into a good space. That's tip number one. Excellent. Mm. And number two is be realistic about your family. So don't expect it all to be perfect. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really sensible, really, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And the next one is practice gratitude. And remember that not everyone is as lucky as you to have a home, a family, a roof over their head, food on the table, mm. even if they're difficult. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> even if they're difficult. And then keep your boundaries. Mm. You are not being selfish or rude for having boundaries. No. So keep them up. Yeah, and absolutely. Strongly. <laughs> absolutely. And remember that no one... Uh, no one has the right to push your boundaries mm -hmm. and you have every right to keep them. Yes. Yeah. Um, avoid being right and agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. So don't get involved in arguments because really the only reason we get drawn into an argument is to prove that we're right. Yes. And there is really no point because no. you're never ever going to convince the other person. So. Well, especially if it's Uncle Fred and, yes. and they always see you as a small child and <laughs> even though you're 42 or something, yes. you know. Yes. <laughs> and then if it gets overwhelming, it's okay to remove yourself. It's absolutely okay to do so. Mm. And, you know, we don't have to do it rudely. We can just gently and politely say, sorry, I just need to blow, go blow my nose. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. And if you're worried about this difficult person, then keep your guests busy. Mm. Um, engage them in some games or um All sorts of games, strategies, but, yes. but keep them busy so that the, the conversation doesn't get to that difficult stage. Mm. And then the last tip is confide in someone who can help you and be your ally. Because like we said, if you're not alone, it's everything is just much, much easier. Yes. So we've come to the end of today's episode, but we promised that we would talk about the meditation download. And so the meditation can be found on our homepage on our website and I'll link the, uh, I'll, set, I'll put the link in our episode notes so you can find it quite easily. 
So that's all for today, isn't it, Sheila? Yes, it is. Yeah, I think we've we've covered it really quite nicely. And um, a, a difficult topic, perhaps, but mm. um, hopefully we've given you some strategies to maintain your sanity and your calmness <laughs> over this busy time. So thank you very much for listening and have a happy and carefree day.